Can you describe the work that you did when you worked at the plant? Well, when I first started, I was uh, worked in a yard for one day. I knew everybody, so I got advanced very quickly. I've been here all my life. And uh, I went to the crystallizer. And that's where they made the fertilizer, ammonia nitrate. And I worked there for several years. And then I went to uh, the acid department. And then I was an operator over in the NAC, SAC. And then I worked in the oxidation where they make nitric acid. And I worked there for uh, 13 years. And then I went to uh, pipe shop. And I worked pipe shop for several years. And then, then I became maintenance supervisor in charge of all the plant, all the maintenance. And I worked at that for oh, seven years or so, I guess. And then when they shut down, or when they sold, then I went with Valley Nitrogen. I did the same job. Okay. What What were the um, the year the year that you started and the year that you ended it? I started in March 1946, and I ended December 1977. What do you remember as far as medical services that they had here? In case anyone was well, we had. Uh, plant nurse doctors too. Uh, the fact is I used to fly and I used to get my medical through the plant doctor. That way I didn't have to go <laughs> pay for it. After you reach a certain age you had to have a physical every six months I think and before that it was every year. They tested hearing and sight and blood pressure and all those things. Um, aside from, from work, uh, what can you tell me about the social <laughs> life here. What did they the do after life. work? Uh, well, uh, a lot of the guys used to go into the bar every night after work and have a beer or something, you know, and then I think uh, we had a Hercules Club group and we would have a feed once a month, a different type feed. We'd have a committee and uh, we had good feeds and they had a lot of entertainment. We used to, in the olden days, we used to have a, there was four tie downs down there in the main room you might see and uh, those were for the boxing ring we used to mount the boxing ring we used to have boxers come in and put on a show for us and uh, what else did we have well Christmas time we had a committee that uh, we bought presents for all the kids from, that worked all the children from Hercules and we gave them out at Christmas time and then at Halloween we had barbecues and stuff and the Panola kids would come up and Hercules all, all the kids was free everybody was welcome you know and what else socially? Well, they used to have dances. We had a nice park for the kids downtown. We built a lot of the equipment ourselves right here at the plant. And all the Panola kids came up here and played, you know. Did you grow up in Hercules? Yeah, I was raised right here, right on Bacchus Avenue, yeah. What was what was that that like growing up here? Well, Where did it was... you go to school and what did you do for it was, fun? It was good. Uh, small community is always nice, you know. And, and my teachers lived across the street on the, on, the Herc, on the Yellow Horse Ranch. And that was the only privately owned building or home in Hercules, was the Yellow Horse home there. And those were my teachers, so I had it made. I, <laughs> I'd go over there, and then when, when I went to school, well, they, if I was a little dumb, they'd help me, you know. <laughs> so they got us through school. Was that building white columns here when you... When you were working there, it was the superintendent's yeah, house. Yeah, that was the, the, big house. the plant manager's house. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it what happened there? That was a real nice building, and uh, in fact, is one of the kids uh, that his father was a plant manager. They had a shooting gallery down in the basement there, and right in his own place there. And uh, I think, if I remember correctly, this might have happened when I during the war when I was away. But uh, what happened? They had an earthquake. And there was some damage done, and this one engineer decided to tear the building down. Well, he got fired for doing that. You know, it was a real night. Nice, it was really an elaborate building. If you could have seen it inside, it was something to see. It's just like from the old South, you know, it's hardwood floors and everything, columns and the whole bit. You know, it's really an elaborate building. How about any other buildings? Were, were there any other buildings that were well important around here? Right across the street, there used to be an old hotel, and the single people lived there that worked at the plant and uh, I don't remember if the China, Chinese people lived there but they used to have a dump over in back of that 
and the guys used to go over there and they had these opium bottles. They'd dig up these old opium bottles, you know, for collections and stuff. How, how big was the hotel? It was two-story, if I remember correctly, and uh, several rooms in it. It was quite large because they had a lot of uh, single people that worked there, you know. Okay. How about the explosions? Were you around for any of those and do you recall them? Well, yes, I was here on a couple of them and then well, I used to fly. One time I was flying when I think in 55 when that big one blew up and we had we lost so many guys I think it was 55 we lost 13 people I think that day and that was the dope house just over the hill there when it blew up and you were not on the premises when it uh, happened, or? let's see if I was on the plant not on that one I'm trying to think of some of the others if I was The last one we had was uh, methanol when that blew up, and we lost uh, one fellow on that one, and two or three were injured. You interviewed Turner, he was one of them earlier, and uh, the other fellow was Elvin Smith. He lived in Elsa Brandy, he was the one that was killed. And uh, what else can I tell you about explosions? <laughs> That's about all, I guess. Is there anything else that, that I haven't asked you about that, that was a particularly interesting event or anecdote or something that you think would be interesting for other people to hear about? <laughs> no, I don't know. It was a good place to, to be brought up, you know, Hercules was, was really, and a good place to work. We didn't make a lot of money, but we had uh, good, you know, good conditions and close to work and cheap rent, you know, you, two minutes you're at work and you live in the village and it was good that way. Uh, you mentioned the opium bottles. Is there anything else you remember hearing about the Chinese? Uh, well, I remember they lost a lot of them in explosions, but then they just replaced them with more. You know, that was the same old story, but there was quite a few of them. Were any of them still here when you started working? No, no, no. I didn't come till 45 and it was all gone. This was way back in the first, you know, first World War in that way. Were you, were you the first generation in your family to work for the plant? No, my father worked here. He was a carpenter. The fact is, I just gave him a picture to copy and uh, shows the maintenance force in 1932 at the plant here. And he was one of them, yeah. But did he ever tell you anything about the Chinese? Any any stories or? No. I think this was, I think that was probably in the 1918 or something like that earlier than, uh, you know when he worked here, but uh, so I didn't know anything like that. We had a, quite a social deal here, you know, with the bowling and everything. They had tournaments and they had softball leagues and uh, they used to go to Richmond and play ball in Nichols Park and then we had a lot of uh, ball right here in Hercules. We had the ballpark right down here, you know. I don't know if you knew where that one was. And the, no, where uh, was that? Well, it's down where Chelsea and down in those homes down in there now. It was right in behind those uh, toolies that way, you know. We had a big ballpark. Now, we used to have big ball games there, really big time. And some of the people went on to become major league stars, like Les Scarcella, and we had from his father and his brother worked here. Harry Scarcella was in charge of the welding shop, and they went on to be major leaguers. Oh, well, that's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. I've heard that before. The Eagles, they had the Panola Eagles, I think it was, and uh, they had a team, and they played. They are really good ball players. Yeah. Right here. Thank you for that. Quite welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>